chat with almost any AI large language model on Linux, depending on your hardware, for free. In previous videos, I showed you how to install Olama and the web UI and to use your GPU to get chatting with some AI systems. Olama is great, but it's limited to whatever language models are built into the Olama system. Uba Booga text generation web UI is free, open source, and gives you a lot more flexibility on what language models you can run. Depending on your hardware, you can run a wide variety of AI language models that are available on Hugging Face. In case you're not familiar, Hugging Face is a repository of open source AI language models. Let's dig in and get this installed. So I've used this Ubabuga web UI in the past, but when I used it, it was in a cloud-based system that installed it automatically. I've actually not, up to this point, tried to install it myself. One thing I want to see is how easy or difficult it is to get it installed. So I'm just going to wing it. We're going to go through the steps, and if it's, you'll find out from this if it's difficult or easy. So the first thing we're going to do is head over to the GitHub repository where it is. I'll link to this in the description. And it looks like the instructions are pretty easy. We clone the repository, run the script, set our GPU, and then use it. So let's start off with trying to clone the repository. So it looks like that's good. And then we'll have to run this start underscore linux.sh. See what happens. Unpacking payload, extracting. It's installing Miniconda and it's going to run in a self contained way. So, according to the documentation, this doesn't spread itself out, it just runs from this one directory. What is your GPU? We are using NVIDIA. So, we're going to select A. Do you want to use CUDA 11.8 instead of 12.1? Only choose this option if your GPU is very old, Kepler or older. For RTX and GTX series, say N. We're going to say N because I'm using an RTX 3080. CUDA 12.1, collecting package metadata, blah, 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 blah. Oh, look at that. It's grabbing a bunch of packages. Looks like it's going pretty smoothly so far. I got a little bit of a download here. All right, looks like we're going. Uh, so it says that we're running on 127.0.0.1 on port 7860, and it's going. So that's cool. The, overall, the installation took, I think, under 10 minutes for like downloading all the dependencies and extra stuff. But it was pretty cool because it didn't prompt me for things, and it didn't give me any errors and dependency errors and stuff like that. It just went and grabbed everything it needed to and got up and running. Let's head over to the web interface and make sure it's actually up and we're good. So 127.0.0.1 port 7860. Look at that. We got it. So if we try to chat with it now, it's not going to work because there's no model loaded in. What you have to do is click over to this model tab here and you go to the download model area and you can put in the name of a model and hugging face. On my RTX 3080, I can run 7B models pretty efficiently. And so what I want to do for a test is go over to hugging face and grab Microsoft Orca 2 7B model. Because that one is a new one released by Microsoft that has a high benchmark for reasoning ability and it runs on a consumer grade GPU like a 3080. I'll link to this model in the description for you. Up here at the title where it says Orca 27B GPTQ, I'm going to click on this icon next to it because that's going to copy it to the clipboard. We go back over to the text gen web UI and we paste that name into the download area and hit download. Wait a little bit of time and it's going to download that model. It doesn't show you the progress while it's downloading. It just goes, then eventually it says done when it's finished. In this case, we're downloading the GPTQ model. You'll see that there's two fields here. If we're downloading a GPTQ model, it goes here. If we're downloading a GGUF model, it goes here. The difference is the GPTQ model uses your video card to do the processing. The GGUF model uses your CPU to do the processing. All right, there, it says done. So the next thing you do is hit this reload button and then over here where it says model none, you pull this menu down and the model that you downloaded is going to be here. So you click on that, 
And I believe this automatically sets the max sequence length that's recommended to begin with, which is 4096. So we're going to leave it like that. And then uh, X llama HF is going to be the model loader. And we're going to hit load. And you'll see down here it says loading. We'll wait a moment. And it says successfully loaded. Seems to be an instruction following model with template chat ML. Another thing to know about this is under parameters and then generation, you can set the max new tokens and you can also set the temperature. If you turn the temperature up, the results get more creative. And if you turn the temperature down, the results get a little less creative, more concise, and the output is less randomized. If you're looking for factual information, turn the temperature down. If you're generating stories, you're doing fiction, you'll want to turn the temperature up. Now what we're going to do is give it a little bit of a test. We'll go over to default. If you look on the Hugging Face page for a model, sometimes they tell you what the prompt template is. Here's our template in this case. And we're going to paste that template into here. And for system message, we'll enter something like, you are a helpful AI assistant. And then here is where we enter the actual prompt. What is the average distance from the Earth to the Sun? And if this is working correctly, the output should show up in the output here. Hit generate. We'll see what it says. Right there. The average distance from the Earth to the Sun is approximately 93 million miles or 150 million kilometers, so on and so forth. So that's that. That's how that works. There's another part of this interface. Like there's a different feature over here called Notebook. It does the same thing. It just looks different. So let's say I were to copy this whole thing and just paste it in here and hit generate. It's going to do that all in one window interesting thing about Ubabuga text gen web UI is you can go over here to parameters and you can go to instruction template and it already sets this chat ML instruction template so in, instead of copying and pasting this here from parameters you can actually click on send to default and it's gonna put that template in here so that's the other way to go about doing it so you can copy and paste the template or you can go over to parameters and do it from there Depending on what model you're using, you can pick different instruction templates that are associated with different kinds of models. The other feature this has is a chat window. So in the chat window, we can go back and forth in conversation instead of just a template where you give her an instruction, it gives you output, and in the end, this way we can keep chatting with the model. 1996, what were some major world events? Tell me more about the launch of Windows 95 by Microsoft. As far as the context window goes, which is how much chat you can continue having before it starts to forget things, I'm not exactly sure, so you'd have to kind of play around with it. Also, we have this menu right here, and we can go to start a new chat, and it'll wipe that chat out, and we'll start over. Let's see if it's censored. How do I break into a car. By default, the Orca model is censored, but the user that we downloaded this model from on Hugging Face called The Bloke, is he takes models and actually removes the alignment layer and makes them uncensored. Microsoft has their own page and they have the 13B version up here. And if you were to download this one and run it, it would be censored. If the TextGen web UI is off and you want to get it started up, you run that start linux.sh program again and it's going to go right ahead and it's going to start it up. That's about it for this. I didn't want to get too much deeper into it. I just wanted to go through the steps of how to get Ubabuga running. As always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video to the end. I'm going to keep doing this. The response has been awesome even just for a new channel and I'll see you in the next one.